video I'll be telling you how you can get the best possible grades in any exams, whether that be your real GCSE exams, your GCSE marks or any chapter test throughout your GCSE course. Or it doesn't even have to be any exams related to your GCSE, so it could be any exams. But for that to happen, you need to consider two factors, how to manage your time effectively and how to have and how to use the best resource or materials that you can ever find. And you probably already have them. But that you even have them. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be telling you how you can get the best possible grades or even a grade nine in any exam that you do by just considering and taking in two factors, how to manage your time effectively and how to use the best possible resource material. Now, before we get into this video, please subscribe so you're tuned for weekly uploads. And I really want one case subs before the end of 2021. Currently, we have 67 subscribers. It would mean the world to me if you subscribed. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and comment down below on re uh, on uploads that you would like me to upload. Um, I've left timestamps so if you hover over the video timeline you can skip to any part. Now let's get straight to the video. Okay so let's start off with managing time. How can you manage your time effectively? Of course we all know time is of the essence and it is really a critical and precious element when it comes to revision. Now when it comes to a test um, depending on how important your test is um, you will be notified by teachers and this notified period could be from one week before your test to even five to six weeks before your test. And of course, if you're real GCSE exams, obviously you prepare for that for two years. Now, let's just take an example. Let's say we've got two weeks to revise for a biology test on homeostasis and response. Obviously, homeostasis and response, if you didn't know, is quite a long chapter and it's a quite an important and difficult one. So there's two steps or three maybe that you want to take into account so how you can manage your time effectively. Now, step number one, which I've talked about in so many videos, just create a revision timetable. But don't take too long on it. Take a maximum of one hour because you don't really want to waste time um, by taking steps into managing time. And the reason why I'm only saying one hour at the maximum, you should really be doing it at 30 minutes is because there's so many templates online. And if you don't want to make a template online, you can just get it grab a, a plain piece of A4 paper, draw some grid lines, and draw what topics you're going to do and what days you're going to do it. Now speaking of days, the next step is how and which days you're going to do it. Which days and do two weeks of um, example revision kind of timetable are you going to revise? Because obviously you're not going to revise every single day due to you having other um, subject um, tests, maybe a maths test coming up, or if not any other tests, then you obviously have lots of classwork and homework. Or if you don't even have any classwork and homework, you don't really want to spend too much revision time on your weekends because of your leisure time and your family time. So there's two ways you could split it out. You could do one day revision, miss a day and do the next. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. Or you could do pick one day on the weekday that you don't have any classwork or homework to do on. So let's say Wednesday and you could pack everything on um, the weekends. Personally, I would recommend you to do um, everything um, um, one day and miss a day because that's more staggered. It's more clean and you'll get a day off on the weekends. Now, the next step is after you've chosen which days, you've got to choose which time of the day because obviously you don't want to procrastinate whilst revising for a test because it's important. It can count towards your assessments if in a time like this when you don't whether you this unpredictable if you're gonna really have your GCSE exams you want to do the best you can and all your other coursework so by the time you're a GCSE student you should really know which time of the day you can work in for me um, I found out that I can really work most effectively effectively from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. I can give it all I've got I don't procrastinate I just get my books out and start revising um, also you're probably thinking but what about the rest of the day so for the rest of the day I usually um, work and complete my homework from one to five because that's the time that I really lose my concentration I want to get distracted and there's just lots of us uh, with my siblings so I complete my homework and any missing classwork and just maybe do some other stuff like create these YouTube videos and edit them from one to five and I really want to keep that six to nine as a precious time I don't want to waste those three hours and I found out that like I can complete double the work in the three hours than I can in those four hours. So that's why you have to pick the best time of the day that you can revise in because obviously you want to do the best in your test so you've got to manage your time effectively. Now we've done we've done we've talked about the part on how you can manage your time effectively. Now let's move on to the more important um undisputedly how and which type of resource material is probably the best and you probably don't even know that you probably already have them. So let's move 
So your resources are really important because without them you can't really revise. But instead of wasting so much time finding the best types of worksheets and exam questions and all of that nonsense, which goes back to going opposing to managing your time, you can really revise most effectively without wasting any time and using the best possible resource material. Now I'll spill the beans now. The best resource materials is the one that you get from class. Now at this kind of period we're in right now, due to online learning, we are able to um, access PowerPoints as well as worksheets that our teachers give us um, from our classwork. So why not use them? Why not when you complete the exam questions for any science subject or any math subject? Why not save them um, and save them to your computer desktop? So then when you come when it comes to your test, you can go through them, uh, go through the questions because obviously you've gone through these worksheets with your teachers. So obviously they're obviously going to be right. They're model answers. And with tricky topics, if you don't understand them, it's really good to have the best possible resources. And one of those resources could be the PowerPoints your teacher give you. So if you save them as well, I'm not saying you just save every single one i'm saying you just save the one that of the topics that you find most difficult in so i wanted to show you how i am able to organize my computer desktop um so i'm able to access them all the, um, i'm able to access all the worksheets um for all the subjects easily so if we just go to my current desktop and if i just go to my name right here um, we've got three. We've got three folders. Um, we want to focus on school. So if we go to school, um, so you can see I've got so many subjects right here. Um, two of the subjects, history and DT, uh, I won't be taking them um, at September. Well, I'll be discontinuing them for the rest of my GCSE course, and they're just here for my uh, for my classwork and any assignments we've got. But let's focus on biology. So say we had a test on biology. Um, if we went on biology right now, you can see that I've got multiple worksheets for the cir uh, circulatory system and I've got exam questions and I've also got transport and plants information questions so if I go on transport and plants you can see now that I've got all these questions and I've been um like I've gone through them with my teacher and these are probably the best model answer that you're going to get so you can use these very effectively you can use them to revise and they're really helpful now these are not just the resources you will use for your test. Now, I will recommend some YouTubers to you that are really good for science subjects. Now, of course, you probably know one of them, Free Science Lessons. He's amazing. Um, he explains lots of stuff. But if you don't know this other YouTuber, he's a very underrated YouTuber. His name is Cognito. He is really able to give you the concept clearly in his videos for GCSE All Sciences. And he's progressing in GCSE Maths. It's so easy to understand it, just the way that he teaches. He doesn't um, show his face, um, there's no face reveal in any of the videos. It's just like cartoons and you're able to understand it. He even gives you clear definitions and he goes through some questions. And if that's not enough, he also has a website called cognito.edu. I don't know what that sounds for, I'll leave the link in the description. Um, I'll leave his channel and his link in the description, uh, I mean his website in the description, because his website is arguably be arguably be the best website for um, your resources for your exam practice because he's got all the subjects excluding computer science so if you were interested in computer science I'm afraid he doesn't have that um, but he has all the boards so AQA, Adexcel, um, OCR He's got foundation as well as higher, and he's got all the exam questions. If you don't want exam questions, and you just want to practice on some questions for just some of the subjects, and he's got that as well. And there's so many questions and worksheets there that you won't even think you're missing out on every any specific topic. So this is how you probably have the best resources, and you probably don't know of. So obviously, if you think long term, you want to save those worksheets that you get. You want to save them to your desktop, like I have. So then, when it comes to your tests, you're able to effectively revise and probably possibly get the best possible grades. And if it's your real GCSEs you can get grade nines. So yeah that was it for how you can manage your